Hey there! Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? Maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. We'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible, because it's the divinely inspired Word of God, and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate, and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes. We'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages, to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community. We believe that it's our job to make it a better place. No matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're with us today. We hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out his plan for us. Welcome to Craig Albert Church. Good morning and welcome to Craig Albert Church Online on this first Sunday of 2021. Happy New Year to all of you who are watching. Wherever you are in the world, thank you so much for connecting this morning for church. We're going to take a chance as we start this new year to look forward to see what God's going to do in your life and in my life. We're going to have a time of worship and reflection. And you know, this week I've really been thinking about what church is. We have this awesome building, awesome facility here in Cumbernauld that we're not able to use at this moment in time. But this week I put an email out and put a message out to people to say, send me a selfie, a picture of your happy faces so that I can put it on social media and I've put it behind me today as well. Because for me, this is the church. You're the church. And if you want to send me a picture to be put onto the wall of fame, if you like, then I would love to receive that this week to include you as part of Craig Albert Church. Today, as we go into a new year, I believe God has got something big in store for us, for you and your family, for your life, even in the circumstances we've faced as we've got rid of 2020 and as we've moved into 2020. 21. How good was it if you were able to tune in with us and hug my knee as we worship together with home church, bringing in the new year? But I believe as we start a new series, even this month as we have a focus on prayer, and let me encourage you, if you didn't request a prayer journal and you would link one of these, then please send me a message and I'll get it to you as quick as I can. If we have to post it, then the post is still catching up. We're still getting Christmas cards. But if I can deliver it personally to you, then I would love to bring it to your door. But this month, we're going to have special prayer breakfasts. We're going to look forward to spending time in focused prayer together. And there'll be more information about that as we go forward. But let me ask you straight away, what are your dreams for 2021? I know it's hard to imagine what it's going to look like. If you think back to the promises, the resolutions and the aims and the goals that you set in 2020, have you managed to achieve any of them? I want to suggest that as we come today, we commit our whole lives into God's hands and see what he can do with the uncertainty, with the insecurity that we face, but that he knows the way forward. So let's just pray and then we'll get into some worship together. Pray, let's pray now. Father, as we come into your presence in this new year, as a church, I thank you for the church, every individual that makes up the church. And I thank you, Lord, that we are able to come this morning and worship you, even remotely. We're able to hear from you, from your word, because it speaks today. And thank you, Lord, that as we go into a new year, you have new opportunities for us to grow closer to you. So we pray these things and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
My dreams for 2021 are to achieve the things that I've set myself and to learn the lessons that God's got for me quickly and, and as painlessly as possible. My dream for 2021 would be able to see my mum and dad who have missed for a great chunk of this year so far um, due to coronavirus so it would be really lovely to see them in person. My dream or desire for 2021 is that we'll be together in the flesh as a church again and that we will continue to grow, grow in love for each other, uh, grow in our knowledge of Jesus as our Saviour. My dreams for 2021 are that I can freely visit friends and family. My dream for 2021 is that Corona will go away and everybody will be safe and that there is no viruses next year. My dream for 2021 is that my decisions would not be ruled by fear. This year has been so full of fear and unknown things and I just want everything to get back to a point where I can be confident of hugging my parents, having family into my home and not worrying about making them sick or what could happen next. So that's my wish for 2021. My dream for 2021 is that all the people that have lost their jobs due to coronavirus get their jobs back or get new ones. And also uh, just grow closer to the Lord and may that closeness and that love just flow over into the community so we can draw others to Christ. That's my desire for 2021. 
My dream for 2021 is for us to get back into church with no restrictions so that we can come together as a family and worship and praise and honour our God and Saviour. My dream for 2021 is that I would get to spend more time with family and friends. See
I would love 2021 to be a year where we celebrate together as a church. Life events, achievements, successes, things that are going on in your life. Last week we thought about Fraser and Ashley's engagement and I'm sure that really encouraged you. So I need your help though, because tomorrow my Fiona turns 40. And I'm looking for as many of you to wish her a happy birthday tomorrow. Send her a video message, send her a text, give her a call and make her feel special. I would have loved to have thrown her a party like I had for my 40th year where we had everybody turn up and it was an awesome time. But we can't get together with family or friends. So can you help me and show her the love tomorrow by wishing her a happy birthday and getting in touch? I would really appreciate that. But let's look at going forward, how we can look to build in your life events, your stories, the things that are happening in your life, whether that be for prayer, for Thanksgiving, or just to celebrate with you. Let's do that as a church family in this new year. This morning we're going to start a new series as we enter this new year from the book of Philippians. I want to encourage you over this next month to read the book of Philippians, to reread it and reread it again, and to hear what Paul writes to this church in Philippi. His desire for them as they go into a new experience with God. Paul is in lockdown at this point. He's in prison, but he wants to share his thoughts and his desires for this church to grow in their faith. And I want that to be the same for us today. Bear in mind that Paul was a guy who once was so religious that he missed out on a relationship with God. And my 
Fear is that sometimes we live that way, that we're so caught up with religion that we miss that relationship and the benefits of that relationship that we can experience with God day by day. And Paul writes this from a place of lockdown and his desire is to see his brothers and sisters, to see his church family, and that's no different. I've come to this book so many times during 2020 and I thought it would be great to start this year sharing some of my thoughts that I've picked up as I read what Paul had to say. Because a lot of what Paul says in this first chapter echoes exactly how I feel about you. It says, every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. That was one of the reasons that I looked forward to getting these pictures in. And asking you to send in pictures of you as the church. To see the faces of the people who make up this church. And I'm sure I'm going to get more pictures, there's more coming in, and I'm going to update this every week. But for me, yes, we've got this awesome building and awesome facilities, and we're blessed by it, but this is the church. And I give my God thanks for every single one of you. He continues by saying, whenever I pray, I make my requests for all of you with joy. For you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the first time you first heard it until now. This might be your first time hearing this today. You might have tuned in for the first time and found us online. Or you might have partnered with us through the whole of 2020 as we try to bring the good news of God's love to everybody who connects each Sunday. You might have been a Christian longer than I've been alive. And your partnership in the gospel and taking this good news has been constant and faithful. That brings thankfulness, it brings joy. It says, I'm certain that God who began the good work within you. You know, God wants to begin a good work in all of us, in us and through us. And when he begins that good work, he doesn't want us to just get to a certain point and stop. It tells us, no, it will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Paul was thinking there's a start point when you start walking that journey of faith. And then that has to continue on a path until that day of completion of when our time in this earth is over or when Jesus comes back. We've been thinking about Christmas when he came that first time from heaven to earth. But there is a day the Bible tells us about and nobody knows when it is when Jesus will come back. And those who believe and those who trust and those who have started that journey and continued that journey will be guaranteed heaven. It's an amazing assurance. And we find it in God's word. But then Paul continues, read with me in verse 7, it says, So it is right that I should feel as I do about all of you, because you have a special place in my heart. I think more and more as we experience this separation, I'm more aware of how much I miss church, how much I miss you, how much I look forward to these Tuesday nights, getting to see you face to face, yes, on a Zoom call. But as I was getting these pictures in this week, I was reminded each family, each individual, you have a special place in my heart. I love my church. I love to see what God can do and the potential that he has in every single one of you. And I know that there's some of you are watching today that I haven't met yet. Some that I had the privilege of meeting this week as I was giving out the prayer journals. But I'm really excited about the day we can get back in here. And as a church, get the chance to be together because you have a special place in my heart. Here's what Paul says as he continues. You share with me the special favour of God, both in my imprisonment and his lockdown, and in defending and confirming the truth of the good news. The people were committed to taking the good news wherever they went, to whoever they met. And we get that same commitment in 2021. That as we partner and taking this good news about transformed lives and about what Jesus is doing in your life and my life day by day, that it would bring joy. It says, God knows how much I love you and long for you with the tender compassion of Christ Jesus. But then Paul says, here's my prayer for you. 
And I want us to think about this as my prayer for you, God's desire for you and for me in 2021, and some simple practical things that I want you to join me with in this year. Verse 9, he says, I pray that your love will overflow more and more. As we've come into a new year, I wonder if there are things that you want to do more and more. Are there things that you've recognised in your life that you need to do less? And you start to prioritise these things and put them in their place. And you may have had great intentions for 2020, but then that was all thrown out the window. But as we come into a new opportunity, Paul says, I want your love to overflow more and more. May that be the heart of this church. Jesus said, a new commandment that I have for you is that you love one another as I have loved you. And when you think about that in practice, it means being deliberate in how we love others, intentional in how we love others, being practical in how we love each other. And it's to overflow. And when that overflows in my life, and it overflows in your life, then it's going to overflow outside of the church and it's going to impact lives in a way that we could never imagine. So the first thing that he prays for is that you would have more love. But I want you to think, what could you have more love for in this 2021? Well, first of all, I thought about having more love for God's word and being committed and disciplined and faithful and asking God to speak to you. I've told you before, but I believe every time I open God's word, God speaks to me. Sometimes what I hear is encouraging. Sometimes what I hear is challenging. But Paul's desire, as he says, I want you to keep on growing in your knowledge and your understanding. As I open God's word, my intention is, is to bring to you a message that is simple enough to understand, because it is, but practical enough to apply. And Paul says to them, I want you to grow in your love, in your knowledge, and your understanding. And the only way we're going to do that is by getting into his word. Psalm 119 talks about God's word being a light and a lamp to our paths. And this year, are we going to allow God's word be, to be what leads us and guides us and directs us? Is our love for God's word going to grow because you can hear God speak through his Holy Spirit and through his presence with you right now? In theory, you don't need me to tell you. You just have to open it and ask God to reveal himself to you. Grow more in love with God's word. Use the tools available to you. You version Bible app, which you can find either on Android or in the, the Apple Play, um, the, the, the App Store, sorry, is an amazing resource because you can pick Bible plans. You can partner with other people and connect with them and say, let's do this study together. You can read through the Bible in a year, as many people last year took the opportunity to do in the church. Why? Was it just so they would have more knowledge? Well, Paul talks about that, or more understanding. Yes, it's so important, but it's not just what it's about. It's about taking it, knowing it, understanding it, and applying it. And that's where you're going to see the change. That's where you're going to see the, the direction. That's when you're going to experience the blessing. Why? It says, for I want you to understand what really matters. And that phrase got me thinking. What is it that really matters to you right now? Take a minute to think about it. What is, is it that really matters in your life right now? Paul wants the Christians in Philippi, Paul wants us today to stop and think, what is it, who is it that really matters? And as I said, we're going to find out what really matters from here as God speaks to us. We're going to see who it is that really matters and how we should love each other and treat each other and care for each other. And that should be an overflow of that love that we experience firstly from God and from others coming in and as we express it, going out. I want this church to be known for its love for God's word, for its love for Jesus, 
because of what Jesus has done for us and what he continues to do in us, what he began, what he continues and what he will complete. I want this church to be known for its love for each other. It's part of our vision statement that we're going to be thinking about over this month. But I also want it to be known for our prayer commitment. And January is a month of prayer for us. Saturday mornings, we're going to have prayer breakfast from half past eight to half past nine. We're asking you to come with your tea and toast and then we're going to take focused time on prayer. Tuesday nights, we're going to spend deliberate time praying for specific things together, believing that we have a prayer answer in God. This was Paul's prayer for the church in Philippi. It says, so that you may live pure and blameless lives. In honesty, if I look at my life, I can see the times where I'm far from living a pure and blameless life. I'm sure you'll be able to recognize that as well in your life. But why is Paul speaking to this church? Why are we hearing this today? Because more and more, we need to be living a life that's pure and blameless. There's an example that's set apart. That when people look at our lives, they see Jesus. When people look at our lives, they see God. When people look at our lives, they see the reality of this in practice because it's God speaking. It says, I want you to live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation. Again, being grown in the fruit. We thought about it, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, gent- um, self-control. We need to have the fruit of the Spirit. I might have got them wrong there. You can look them up in Galatians 5. But it talks about we need to be always filled. Filled with the fruit of our salvation. Sometimes we live running on empty. Don't know about you when you're driving your car. But I've got an orange light that continually flashes and the car is almost always running out of diesel until I get to that station and try and put maybe 10 or 20 pound in it to get me to the next time the light flashes. And sometimes we live our faith like that. Sometimes that's the way that we operate when it comes to filling our lives with God's intentions, with the knowledge of what God wants for us. We, We just put enough in to get us by. But God's desire is to fill us, that we would be full, we would be satisfied. And that comes in knowing, that comes in loving, that comes in understanding and overflowing. You see, when God is working in our lives, we shouldn't be just looking for the half empty or just to get by. We should be looking for his love to overflow for his knowledge to overflow, for his understanding to overflow, for his character to overflow. And when I ask you this morning, what is it you want more of? I want you to be saying, I want more of him. I want more faith. I want more prayer. I want more of Jesus. Because in 2021, whatever we face, whatever it is that we go through, then we can know that we're filled. We can know that he is with us. We can know his plan and purpose for us. And again, as I look at this screen and I look at all of these people and those still to be added, I'm excited that God's doing this in individuals. And then collectively when that comes together, wow, God's power is going to move in 2021 like it never has before. But the challenge is, I need to be filled. I need to be overflowing. I need to be excited. I need to be deliberate. I need to be intentional. I need to be intentional with his word. I need to be intentional with my worship. I need to be intentional with my walk with God. And I wonder this 2021, if you will join me on this journey. Will you pray with me and ask God to overflow that love that knowledge, that understanding, the character, that you would live a pure and blameless life, that our lives would be examples to people who don't know God yet, 
but who will want to know who God is. Because when they look at your life and mine, they can see something that they don't have. They can see the peace that passes all understanding. They can see the contentment that we have because we know that God is in control. But we can, they can see the love that we have for each other. A new commandment is that you love one another with the love of Jesus. Let that be the verse that takes us through this whole year. Let it be seen in our actions and our motives. We'll think about that over this month. But as we come this morning to think, God, I want more of, let us pray that we have more of him and less of me. Because that's part of the problem. That's part of the difficulty is that life is often more about me than it is about him. And then we wonder why we're wandering and we're going in the wrong direction and when things go wrong. But when you ask for more of God and more of him and more of his wisdom and his ways, then you're going to see what God can do and he will do. He's going to do a new thing. So let's take a minute to pray and commit at the start of this year. And if you this morning are saying that you want to begin this journey, then get in touch. If you want to say it's part of continuing this journey, John, I'm in. And I want the tools and the resources and the encouragement to do it. Because one day we'll come to that moment where our journey will finish and be complete. And for those who say, I love Jesus, for those who have given their lives to say, I want more of him, I want forgiveness, I want grace, I want hope. Then we'll know what heaven is like. And I want you to be there. So let's take a minute to pray as we finish. Father, as we come into a new year, we give our whole lives into your hands. We recognize, Lord, that we're nothing without you. But help us, Lord, to experience your love more and more. Lord, may you overflow and our lives in a way that we've never experienced before. As we've seen last year in a world of chaos, Lord, I pray that you would help us to see that you're in control and that we can trust you. And I ask, Lord, in whatever we face, that our desire would be to get to know you more, to love you more, to serve you more. But not only that, Lord, that you that would be seen in our relationships with each other, is that we would love as Jesus loved. And Lord, that would be something that would move in power in a way we would never expect in this year. So we commit this into your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to say thank you for tuning in this morning and taking a chance as we start this series in Philippians. I do encourage you, go and read it and reread it. Write down the things that God speaks to you and talks to you. Look to see how you can apply it. And then as we come every week, then you'll be one step ahead because you know exactly where it is that we're coming from. Join us on Saturday mornings online. This will be on Zoom and if you want to know the details and how to access that, then we want you to come with your breakfast, but we can give you the details of the login and the password from half past eight until half past nine to start those Saturdays. Same as well with a Tuesday. If you've not yet joined us um, over lockdown on a Tuesday night, don't let that stop put, stop you coming on a Tuesday night from eight o'clock until nine. Again, it's going to be a chance 
to experience God more and more together and see each other for that short time. But if God has been speaking to you today and you think, well, I want to begin this walk with God, then I want you to reach out. If you want help and continue in that walk with him, then let us help you resource you and with whatever it takes. Recognising that this is continual, it's day by day, and God wants to work in your life and in mine. I'm excited about this year. I'm excited that you're here with us. Remember and send me more pictures for my selfie board and I can get this increased with the face of the church. But let's today be thankful for what God is doing in your life and in my life and help us to see what really matters. Take care and God bless.